Okay, in the finals here, I was just saying in the end of the last round, if uh, my opponent was trying to say an insult for um, can't believe I won, but then I realized WP being well played means I think that opponent was just saying good job. Um, cool, we have a keep here, thanks to Voyage Gene Seder into our four drops, assuming we draw one more land, and we're going to be on the draw, so we have a little extra draw step to get there. And um, having a Voyage's End to scry and stay alive against any crazy pressure should be good. Oops, nope, not going to split. Okay, back in it to win it here. Um, and again, we're gonna, we are not going to uh, mulligan. And Phil IV keeps, ooh, and starts playing aggressive. Yay, all in. So now we're in really good shape with our Seder into our occult, into tons of manas. And here's a Flesh Mad Steed, which is not the most scary thing across from the table. Lightning Strike! Well, now it's a little bit of a bummer, but that's gonna happen. Uh, Opponent stuck on two lands. Maybe in a nice aggressive deck, though, that doesn't entirely matter. I still think I'm gonna play the Occult out first and then the Nightly as Disciple. Just get tons of mana available. And the Occult blocks very well. Could be right to play the Disciple so I can start eating things, but I'd be tapped out. I'm not gonna like have a whole lot to be doing. I love the idea of having nutty amounts of mana. Ooh, Dragon Mantle. Right now it doesn't force through an attack, but it does cycle. Attacking in for the free attack. No reason not to do that. If my opponent has anything else. So I can either play an Alias Disciple or get the Fairy's Band Centaurs down next turn. I think I want to play the Centaurs because the Disciple still doesn't get me, um, it only gets me three extra mana and I can't play anything after that. Um, oh, well, maybe that's changed now. Let's see, I could play the... An Alias Disciple into an Agent of Horizons, but that's not doing a whole lot, whereas the Fairy's Band Centaurs really helps stabilize and just eats things. So let's do that. Plus, we, we're going to start getting some incremental advantage with uh, a bunch of extra devotion to green. In order to get uh, more life, which will be nice. Opponent's stuck on three still, maybe? Not too sure. Hmm. Belfal Eidolon. I do like that card. It looks like my opponent is trying to get defenses up. Alright, with all this mana, what can I do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, possibly 8, 9 if I play the Disciple first. So that's 4 and a 5. Can I play the Nemesis first? 1, 2, one, two, one, two 3, 4, 5 to play the Nemesis. It gives me one, two, three, four to play the disciple. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Play this guy down. Play this guy down. I do like that. And no, we're not going to attack. I don't want to trade off really good dudes for this Belfal Eidolon. The Eidolon can hold back for days. We'll get the uh, agent online soon and start bashing in. My deck is not in a rush. Especially as my opponent continues to do not a whole lot. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I uh, should have planned that better. Because I wasted a mana, but whatever. Not awesome, but not the end of the world. I 
opponent's going to start be able to play the spells that are caught in hand, but hopefully we'll have a lot of defense available. We have our voyages in and our time strength, and we're able to uh, bash through, at least for three a turn here. Oops. Thought we were on attacks already. And then just hold the defenses up. I'm very okay with three a turn. That is a fast enough clock for myself. Still like having more mana than is needed. Oh, that was silly. <laughs> I should probably pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, I play the Tiny Strength on Agent of Horizons thinking, oh yeah, that guy would stay alive and I'd get six points through. But instead I just threw that away. And now I have to come up with a different game plan, uh, which means I'm going to have to trade these guys off at some point. Ooh, and with the Grey Merchant, yeah, that's going to happen soon. Let's see, do I void just end the Baleful Eidolon and just smack in with uh, the 1010 and the 65? I could do that, but I'd rather save it for something a bit more relevant. I still have plenty of life, yeah. So the Disciple gets to go in. I'm just going to start bashing in with these two. Disciple will just get blocked by Great Merchant all day, but my opponent you know, might know I have a couple of tricks here or there. And if the Goliath gets blocked by Eidolon, still five points of damage. So I'm okay with that. Interesting. So that's cool. I'm actually very stoked my opponent wants to like help me clear the board. There could be a, uh, a time strength in my opponent's hand, which means I don't necessarily want to um, maximize my six to kill both of these guys. So I'm actually going to take out uh, the Minotaur and the Steed. The 4-3 is really inconsequential with my two Gigantor dudes. I care more about devotion costs to like this Grey Merchant or something. My opponent will then take three. Um, yeah, I believe that's true. Because I just want to guarantee getting a 2 for 1. That being said, the Titan Strength and a Borderline Minotaur still is a 2 for 1. Yeah, let's let's go for it. We'll do this guy first. This guy second. My, my opponent could keep one of them alive, but it's still a pretty good deal for me. Great. How much is that? Six? There we go. So 
So I already have one there. I just want a monstrosity it now. Three, four, five. That's one, two, three, four, five. Good card. Hold on. What am I doing wrong here? Three, four, five. Oh, I see. Um, six. That's what I want to do. There's no flyers, so I'm just happy to use it to get a big old dude, even though I don't get to kill anything. Here comes another Minotaur. Death Bellow Raider. If I bounce the Eidolon and smack in with everybody, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Could start taking out some of the big dudes, so I think we will just hang on. Showcasing that Voyager's End, but that's okay. Um, and then for now, I think we'll just keep smacking in with some three threes. Is that right? I'm attacking in because I don't have a lot of evasion, and I am um, happy to just to continue to get um, things off the board, trading through, so that we can do a really big 19-point swing um, once uh, these guys go down. So we'll go one here. I know it's just a disciple against the Death Bell Raider, but the more we get off the board, um, the better, honestly. My opponent's slowly taking damage. So if we can win whittle away, we'll be in good shape. Ooh, here comes a harpy. That's gonna get not too annoying because we still have reach. Four, five, six. Harry's band centaurs gets to start getting blocked. I need to grab some way to deal with this Eidolon. I think our battle master is good. Not really what I want. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait it out. It's got big old fatties. Let's see if we can't get my opponent one way or another. I oh, could have, you know, Lash the Whip or something, but it's not like I waste the Feral Invocation. Get rid of one dude. You just keep on trudging along the attrition game. So if I bounce the Baleful Eidolon, and attack in with everything. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a whole lot of damage, right? Let's go for it. It means my opponent can put the Eidolon onto something else. Ooh, that's good. And then we'll get to kill it. And there we go. So we're drawing a time defeat next turn, which we knew from our scry, which would have been nice. How would that have worked out? I mean, yeah, huge points of damage. 
Time to feed. We probably use the Senator Battlemaster to get big things online. Even more than the big that we already had. We saw Blood Toll Harpy. Makes this relevant. I'm more worried about staying alive early game. It looks like my opponent's trying to be aggressive. Which means I do want to pull out the Volpine Goliath and bring in the Shredding Winds, take out a Flyer, and just to have, you know, one less big fatty. Rather have a card that does something to stay alive. Because, like, a Bolt, Blood Tail Harpy with a Dragon Mantle on it is not good for me. And then, yeah, I think that'll help out. Ooh, this is very tempting to keep. We have so many forests in our deck and we're on the draw. We have 11. It's 1 and 3. No, we're going to live it a little bit dangerously. I'll try to draw that forest. And there it is. Lucky, lucky. I mean, odds are in our favor to have it on our, the first couple turns before uh, we get too screwed. But having it now puts us in a really good spot. Main thing I'm worried about are lightning strikes. We saw two for my opponent, and that was the most powerful thing that was happening. Grey Merchant can get there, but not the end of the world. Here we'll just go ahead and flash out a Nessian Courser. So we can have blocks, assuming nothing else comes down. You know, lightning strike can still take out the Nessian Courser, and that's definitely a thing. Ooh, an ordeal. What should I deal with an ordeal? By gaining life, I suppose? Looks like it's a race. One that I might win with this Nylea. Can I afford that temple loss? Or do I just want to get the Chimera online? I think I play Nylea. This ordeal is going to kill me though, man. Because I want to protect the Chimera. I think Chimera is how I might win. One, two, three. Next turn we have the Agent and the Heaterness, which gets us one, two, only four. Uh, devotion for Nylea, so there's really no point to play Nylea right now. So we'll play the Occult. So we at least try to get there. And we're going to attack to not get too far behind. Aww. That's really bad. Because I was already planning on Ordeal being a bummer in terms of making the um, our Nylea hard to get to Devotion. Because there's already two creatures gone. And now with that and maybe some Lightning Strikes and whatnot, it's going to look ugly. That means if my opponent attacks again next turn, yeah, we're taking eight. But then the Corsair is the one that has to go or one of these two. I'm actually okay with that. So yeah, I guess that's what we're doing. I don't know how we're going to get um, back in this game. If we're lucky, since my opponent doesn't know about the god, uh, this ordeal is going to go straight to my face this turn. Ooh, that's bad. <laughs> Let's see where our deal goes. Take out the agent, probably. Yeah. I was praying. Can I afford to take nine? 
I don't think I can. But my only way of winning is getting this Knight Leia online, so I'm just going to take it. Boom Seder's good. But I don't think it's going to be good enough. I have two lethal creatures coming by. But at least the course you can trade off with the war caller. Well, we're not playing Nylea. We're going to play one of our flash dudes. And I got to keep my defenses up. If a lightning strike comes down, the Courser might be able to stay alive with the Boon Seder. Really? So now this guy has haste. Three lethal guys? How do I survive this? Okay. Seder, Peterness has to chump the spear point Oread. At least my courser can block as can a boon satyr. But then they die. I'm still losing to the spear point Oread in the future. Therefore, not awesome. But that's pretty much what I have to do. And I don't think I have a way to get out of this with the Oread, but gotta go for it, right? Now have to chump with the Horizon Chimera. That's okay. Not great, but that's okay. See my opponent sighted that in. playing out to. I don't think I have any outs to take out a 5-5 five five without flying. I'm not showing Nylea God of the Hunt. I could have used my mana for all that, but I th think I'm just going to concede after I see where this next card is. Yeah. <sighs> Should I have conceded? I had one chump. Arbor Colossus wasn't out. Could have played the Arbor Colossus next turn. Traded off. There would have been an Eidolon down. And that would have had a number of turns to get back in the game. Mm. Never concede prematurely. I think there was hope in that for me. Yeah. I don't think I should have conceded. I had just the Arbor Colossus. But even the Fairies Band Centaurs like kept me alive if there wasn't the idol on there. Um, a Nemesis might have gotten monstrous enough. Eventually. Very doubtful. So I'm not going to beat myself up too much for that concession. But I do wish I knew my deck better to know if I could have uh, stayed alive or not. Alright. That's fine. Alright, we're definitely playing first against this opponent. Ooh, and we have a horrible hand that we have to mulligan. And then a very weak hand if we were to keep it. But I am going to keep it, because we do have an Arbor Colossus, which is quite powerful. And if we can stay alive long enough, we're going to get there. I just hate going out of five on the play. 
All right, let's see how much pressure we have. There's got to be a two drop. I mean, we've seen a bunch from my opponent. Ooh, nothing. That's great. Lightning strike could come down, but that's okay. We need to stay alive. Cool. So the odds are in our favor. So far, we've been very blessed. forest moved. Um, I should have kept the mountain open because I could have uh, saved my dude from such a plight. And I also just kind of showcased inadvertently, even though that's not what I was trying to do, um, showcased inadvertently that I had Titan Strength. My opponent probably thought that's what I was playing. So I should have targeted... Um... Oh, wow. Now I'm really screwed. My opponent hasn't put any pressure on yet, and we do have a couple of two drops here. Might be able to stay alive. One land, I can sacrifice my Heatiness to play the Nessian Ass. That'd be kind of cool. While my opponent floods out on an aggressive deck. Do I do that? Is that something that I want to do? Sacrifice my Hedonist to have three, four, five mana to, and we can back that up with like an Arbor Colossus as well. Kind of like that, yeah. Let's just do it. Sip of Hemlock would be bad. Ooh, Hammer Perforos is bad. And an Ordeal is bad. Uh, we have... To, uh, no, we don't, because Voyages and we don't have the mana for yet. Bit of a race. And with the Hammer, it's going to be really hard, but we have the tools to get there. Alright, we got a game, though. This is cool. Bummer is, this guy's going to do a lot of damage while this hammer can really just start blocking and or, ooh, and the race changes again. Okay. I really need a, uh, what should I call it? An island. I need an island. I might be able to uh, get this lamp pad out of super duper danger mode. That's not quite what I'm looking for here. Taking five, six, seven, eight next turn. So that's pretty much game, but my opponent doesn't necessarily need to know that. But I can't imagine that that be ooh, there we go. For sure done and done. And Phil Ivy beats me out with a pretty fun looking uh, uh, black red deck. Um, although I think it also highlights kind of how why I don't like black red. You can really get some really clunky clunky draws. GG's. Oh, Phil did it on the private chat. Um, you know, like in that first game when there's just nothing going on, the parallel seems so weak. Here, there's a really nice um, curve and got the pieces. 
but you have to have the the actual decent cards to make it worth anything. Whereas I feel like there's more um, um, consistency in other decks. Which is actually why, uh, with consistency, I care so much more about being black in general. Um, so, I guess my theory worked. Um, go black and win a draft. Well done to Phil Ivey. Um, again, and uh, thanks everyone for watching, just in general. Uh, once foremost, uh, what am I saying? I'm so tired, sorry. Um, I'm Ryan from Mana Bluff. Uh, comment on manabluff.com or uh, comment, subscribe, and like on YouTube. I try to check those as well. You can find me also on Twitter, underscore, underscore, RJH, underscore, underscore. Most importantly, have an awesome time at the pre-release this weekend. I'm stoked to play Born of the Gods and start getting those videos up come Valentine's Day. Till next Friday, have a wonderful week. Bye.